What if leaving the nether meant certain death? Well, undeath? Imagine exploding if you ever tried to sleep. Picture a world where you are actually good at PvP. Envision having an insatiable greed for gold. This is Hardcore Minecraft and I plan to survive 100 days as a piglin. I have three goals for this video. Number one, take over a bastion and become the ruling brute. Number two, get a netherite block to use as a throne. And number three, defeat the wither in the nether. Let the adventure begin. Day one, as I took a look around, breathing in that nether air with my new pig snout, I realized I only have 8 hearts. However, I did feel a little bit more confident when I saw my neighbor getting a little late night snack. And like the start of any new Minecraft world, I got to work at punching down some trees. By the time I had 3 logs, I had already gotten into my first fight. This baby hoglin was ready to throw tusks. Being the more civilized creature, I crafted up myself a sword and got a good hit or two on him before he ran off. And by the time I crafted myself up some more tools, he was back and ready for round. Two. This time, I didn't want him to get away, so I started chasing after him as he scurried off and he escaped through this little one block hole. I could hear him laughing as I walked away defeated. I knew I couldn't take on an adult hoglin on day one, so I decided to make myself some mushroom stew. Unfortunately, the fungus can't be crafted into stew, and since I couldn't find any normal mushrooms, I tried to fight a full grown hoglin. Let's just say that it did not go well. After running away for dear life, I mean, after a little bit of exploring, I found myself some mushrooms and I was finally able to heal up. I wanted to get some stone tools, but I didn't want to go mining for blackstone quite yet. So I went around gathering some gold to trade with piglins because I know that sometimes you can get blackstone from them, but they do also give you a lot of trash. I still did get some ender pearls, arrows, and string for a bow. I spent day two and three hunting hoglins from the safety of the treetops and chopping down some of those trees. Once I had a good amount of resources, I set out to explore the nether. It's a lot harder traversing the nether because of having to walk on all this soul sand and there are a lot of steep cliffs that you have to climb down. I eventually came across this warp forest and decided to get some blue materials as well. Once I had gotten a good amount of stems and warp blocks, I decided it was time to mine for some black stone. I actually found some pretty easily which meant I finally could have some stone tools. I was definitely one- Oh, I forgot I was a piglin. I was definitely one happy piglin. Although this is one of the reasons I don't like mining in the nether. Another thing that's very helpful as you journey through the the nether is ender pearls. So I took a little bit of time these first few days to kill some endermen so I could teleport from place to place. Of course, I don't want to waste all my ender pearls, so I made sure I had a lot of netherrack so I could breezily bridge across the lava. Look at those skills, you couldn't take me on in bed wars. I didn't know how common warp force would be, so I decided to grab a few more resources before heading out to find my first structure. And by the end of day seven, as I worked my way across the basalt delta, I came across my first nether fortress. I spent the next two days Days running around in circles, getting lost, and trying to loot this fortress. I did find a few saddles and gold, as well as iron, which is actually pretty rare in the nether. I definitely had to be very strategic in what I chose to carry on me. Did you know that a stone sword actually does more damage than a gold sword? After finding all the loot that I could, I decided to craft myself up a shield, as well as a little armor, because I was ready to pick some fights. I started by fighting off some wither skeletons in hopes that they would drop some coal. I think I got a little unlucky because I just kept getting bones, but what was lucky, I didn't even have to kill a lot of skeletons for one to drop a wither skull. And it turns out piglins actually can crouch, it just doesn't look like it in first person. Since I was getting a little unlucky getting coal, I decided to try to kill some blazes in hopes that the blaze rods would cook all of the pork chops that I've collected so far. I also got to test out my shiny new shield. For some reason, whenever I craft things with blackstone, I always think that the items I'm making will have a black tint to it, but they're just normal. Once I had my first furnace made, I threw my pork chops inside and found out that a blaze rod actually can be used to cook stuff with. After getting a six piece from the drive through I spent day 11 trying to make back some of my money. Okay, I was actually trying to collect some gold to trade with the piglins. I spent day 12 to day 15 exploring more of the nether and wasting a lot of gold on these guys. I did manage to get some arrows from them and you can actually get bottles of water from piglin trading. Let me know down in the comments if this is the only way to get water in the nether. Once I left those piglins that 
that scammed me, I came across a strider in a warped forest. I finally had everything I needed to make a warped fungus on a stick. I also had a few saddles with me. So with the help of this friendly strider, I was finally able to cross lava in style. And thanks to his help, I found another nether fortress. I spent day 16 and 17 scouring through this fortress, as well as hunting some hoglins. And this is definitely the most unique fortress I've ever come across. So many trees grew into it, and I could not find a single chest. But at least the hoglins around here weren't the smartest. They were all willing to sacrifice themselves for the sake of my own survival. I also got some extra food because I wasn't the only one hunting out here. On day 18, I was finished with my hunt and ready for more exploration. I was in search for a bastion to conquer and call home. I traversed through all the biomes in the nether, and it was actually a little bit easier getting around with a strider. I was definitely able to appreciate all of the natural generation, although there comes times where the lava stops and you need to take back your saddle. It's a little sad, but I actually found out that you get some free string from killing striders. I also realized that you could move a little faster on soul soil compared to soul sand. Instead of stopping to smell the roses, I would stop and mine all the gold that I found along the way. On day 23, feeling brave, I drank a fire resistance potion and jumped into the lava. With the clock ticking, I swam as fast as I could to the near strider. I got a saddle ready, and as I got closer to the strider, he whispered something to me. He said that pressing the subscribe button will actually make you subscribe to my channel. I was a little confused, but after he said that, he just picked me up and began carrying me to safety. As I was looking for a good place to make it back onto land, I saw a black structure in the distance. I was so excited that I finally found a bastion. At the beginning of day 24, I parked my little friend near the entrance of the bastion and began making my way inside. Here are two really good things to know if you're going to be playing Minecraft as a piglin. The piglin brute will attack you on sight. The second thing is, piglin brutes don't respawn, so once you kill them, they're gone for good. Since I wasn't wearing a lot of armor, I did not want to let him hit me. I'm pretty sure he could kill me in just one hit. So after finally being able to turn into a piglin brute, I started crafting up some more armor. And as a piglin brute, you get two full lines of hearts. I was feeling much more ready to take on all the brutes in this bastion. Since I was about to loot this place, I decided to put all of my extra stuff into a chest. I really wanted to show off my new look, but I didn't want to risk dying. So we'll see what I look like after I kill off all of these guys. This was my first time raiding a bastion. I didn't realize how terrifying it is to turn a corner and run into a piglin brute. They hit so hard and they're really fast. After killing off the last brute, I went to the center courtyard and looked around at my new kingdom being the only piglin brute left. Then, I quickly put on all my armor because I didn't know if that was actually true. Once I did figure out that all the danger was gone, I began looting all the chests. I got the advancement for finding my first piece of ancient debris and tried to collect this gold block with a stone pickaxe. Yeah, please don't try that yourself. I did find a lot of other goodies like arrows, a good amount of iron, as well as some gold armor and another piece of ancient debris. Something I didn't find in the nether fortresses were diamonds. I was so excited when I found a diamond pickaxe with fortune 2 in one of the chests. Then I could pick up the gold blocks with no issues. By the end of day 25, I had found a lot of good loot. I made myself a nice little storage room while I cooked up all of my raw pork chops. Day 26, I spent expanding the entrance to my new base, making it a lot easier for me to get in, as well as added a little bit of structural support and a nice little garage to park my strider because he managed to escape. Luckily, after a little bit of searching for him, I found him. I worked my way down to the lava, but he walk to the other side. I started bridging one way, so he started walking the other way. I started bridging that way, and then he started walking right back to my base. Luckily, he stayed right near my base, so I was able to lure him back with his favorite food and lead him to his new home, where I could walk safely and he could also stay warm. Then on day 27, I crafted up a bunch of stone pickaxes, made sure I had a lot of extra resources to build more, and made myself some soup for my next adventure. If I was going to get a netherite block, then I would need to start mining ancient debris now. So I started making a mineshaft down to Y level 15 and ran into some more lava. And after just a little while of mining, I found two pieces of ancient debris. By the end of my mining session, I had 10 ancient debris. That plus the two I found in the bastion meant I was a third of the way to a netherite block. Another benefit for mining for ancient debris is that you can actually find a good amount of gold ore, which made me extra happy to have a fortune 2 pickaxe. On day 32, I captured this piglin and made him trade with me all day. I spent over a 
stack of gold, but I got a lot of good loot out of it, including about a stack and a half of these spectral arrows. On day 33, I headed up to try to find some glowstone to use on my potions in an attempt to make them stronger. And on my way up, I found a chest with not just a mending book in it, but also an iron sword with mending on it. My luck was finally turning around. While I was up with the glowstone, I decided to take a look around and I saw a chicken jockey and I figured if I could get the rider off, I might have a chance to breed up some chickens. Mention in the comments if there's any way to get seeds in the nether, cause I haven't found any so far. When I came up to the chicken jockey, I didn't even have to do anything, the chicken just killed its rider on its own. So after I caught the chicken, I gathered some glowstone, I realized that while glowstone makes potions stronger, I actually needed redstone to make my potions last longer. I don't think you can find redstone in the nether, but one good thing about living in the nether is being able to throw any junk into the lava. On day 34, for some reason, I thought it'd be a good idea to start a hoglin farm. Yeah, <laughs> let's just say that it wasn't a good idea. They chased me all around until I finally climbed to safety and found a way to finally capture them. The second one was a little easier to catch, but they were not hungry. So I had to dig a tunnel down to a point where I could feed them without them trying to kill me. And right as I was getting the parrots and the bats achievement, the little baby hoglin came running out of the hole that I made. Luckily, since it was chasing after me, I got it back in the trap and closed it off. I spent the rest of day 35 into day 36 trying to get all the hoglins down into this little habitat that I built them. Even though they tried to kill me, I tried to make it a little homey for them. I spent the rest of day 36 making this awesome throne for me to sit in. I had to use some of the ancient debris to make the top look really cool, and in total I would need 36 pieces of ancient debris to make one netherite block and finish my throne. It was a pretty normal mining session, I don't think I found more than two in one place. But with this last piece found, I had 11 more pieces of ancient debris to add to my collection, meaning there's only 17 blocks left to go. I threw all my netherrack into a chest and spent day 42 and 43 making this bastion a little safer. I covered up all the magma blocks on the ground, said hi to the guy that I traded with before. He seemed to be going a little crazy being cramped in there. I continued filling in blocks. After filling in a lot more of the floor around my base, I was walking by this guy again and I realized that he had a lot more friends since last time. Turns out they were spawning in the room above him and falling through this one hole in the floor. So I took a little bit of time to make some of the higher levels a little safer to walk around in. And while doing that, I found this really cool treasure room in the back of the bastion. It had a lot of cool loot in it, including another piece of ancient debris. By the end of day 43, the bastion was looking a lot more fixed up and a lot safer for all of my peasants to walk around in. On day 44, I realized having a hoglin farm meant that I would have to have some sort of resource to cook them with. And it looks like somebody's Mr. Popular, but seriously, I'm not gonna help these guys escape. They made their own decisions. And with no regrets, me and my strider set off into the nethery unknown to find another nether fortress. When I thought I got to a good place to park, I was greeted by a very territorial hoglin. After getting him killed with my mad jukes, I gave my strider a little hole to stay in and marked it with a piece of blackstone. Not too long after that, this carnivorous beast allowed me to test my crossbow on him. Do hoglins eat piglins or do they literally kill us just for fun? These were the kinds of questions that went through my ooh mushrooms. Now, where were we? Oh yeah, finding a nether fortress. I carefully bridged my way over, and it's always good to have a potion of fire resistance in your hotbar. You'll see why in a minute. And right where I entered the nether fortress, I found a blaze spawner. Here's another little tip. As a piglin, magma cubes won't attack you, but don't try to squeeze past them because they will still hurt you. Especially after some previous experiences, I was so excited to find a chest. While this one just had gold, the next one I found had a diamond in it. And I didn't realize, but this was my very very first diamond that I found in this world. And after a bit more looting, it was time to make a manual blaze farm to get some rods to cook my hoglins with. And remember when I said when you should carry a potion of fire resistance in your hotbar? I went to go place some netherrack underneath me and I hit caps lock instead of the shift button. Being almost halfway to 100 days, I was so terrified to see the lava quickly coming towards me. I drank my potion as quickly as possible and swam to safety. After that close encounter with death, I decided to make myself some more armor and spent the next two days killing blaze in my new blaze room. On day 50, I decided to take the long way home. With just two raw pork chops to my name, I spent some time gathering up some mushrooms and hunting some hoglins. I eventually stumbled across my strider friend and we made it back to the bastion. I threw on a golden helmet, having the most drip out of all the piglins combined. On day 52, I went to go breed my hoglins and found an empty cage. I think some of the piglins in the bastion killed my hoglins. There was just a random zombie left. I didn't want to have to go capture some more hoglins right now, so so I spent the next few days
days chopping down trees for a build. And got a good amount of warp blocks as well. On day 55, I grabbed all of my cooked meat and headed down into my ancient debris mine. On day 58, I had 8 more pieces of ancient debris, and after grabbing some of this gold, I headed back up to my bastion. I leave a lot of netherrack down in the mine, but I do make sure I carry up as much as possible in case I need it for a build. And with 28 pieces of ancient debris, we were another step closer to having a netherite throne. On day 59, I tried to capture a few more hoglins, and my first attempt did not go well. After killing these piglins with their own greed, I went about capturing 4 new hoglins. That way, they would have a better chance against the piglins. On day 60, I expanded the area of the hoglin habitat and made a much easier way to get the hoglins into their new home. I got them all to chase me down into their cage and quickly realized I didn't have a good way to escape. I was trapped with 4 hoglins and their new baby. I smacked them in the face with my pickaxe and ran for the gate, getting out just in time. This time, to protect the hoglins from my subjects, I decided to close up the balcony as well as the entrance downstairs. I had just got a new chestplate and helmet and thanks to the hoglins, I had to make new pants and boots. Day 61, as I was getting ready for a cool build lapse, I realized I might have enough iron to make an anvil. Turns out, I actually did. I was actually looking for iron to make some shears to gather some weeping vines, but I spent all my iron on my anvil. I was so excited to finally throw that mending book I found on my diamond pickaxe. I spent a lot of day 61 collecting weeping vines, and you don't need shears to collect them, just your fist. But the drops do seem a bit random, so can someone please explain to me how the drops work for this? After collecting a whopping 23 weeping vines, I started heading back to my base and saw another chicken jockey had spawned. So I captured it and got the chicken to kill its rider. Then I went to go check on my other chicken and I was getting a little worried when I couldn't find it, but then I randomly picked up this egg. He was safe too. I spent, I guess what you would call the night of day 61, trying to get these chickens into my bastion. I don't know if you can get seeds in the nether, but at least you can get eggs which you can throw in hopes to get a chicken. I started to freak out when a chicken actually did spawn, and as I fumbled to get blocks to stop it from escaping, it jumped back into the pen with its parents. And now I thought I was finally ready for a cool build, but I realized that you can't really see the bastion from far away. So I spent day 62 to 64 clearing out this huge land bridge in front of my base. And watching back the build, I realized the walls on the side needed to be a little bit more bumpy. And anyone with a keen eye would have noticed that I missed a single wart block. And after getting that last block, on day 65, I decided to head down into my mine and not come up until I had gathered enough ancient debris for my throne. I think I only needed 8 pieces, but I decided to go for 12 so that way I could have a netherite pickaxe. When I made it back to the surface, I was so excited that all my hard work would finally pay off. I grabbed all my gold and my ancient debris just to realize that you have to smelt all the ancient debris first. I have a really bad tendency of leaving stuff in my furnaces, and after throwing all that ancient debris into my furnace, I was finally ready to build a nether ship. Any good ship build needs a dock. So once I finished that, I was able to start on the main part of my boat. The time lapse was a little fast here, but let me just say, when building above lava, make sure that you have a few potions of fire resistance on you. Even with the effect on, this part was terrifying to me. But I was determined to get a good build out of this, so I swam back out to add one more block to the front. Piglins, especially the brutes, give me a bit of a viking vibe, so I was going for a viking ship with a mix of that creepy ship from Pirates of the Caribbean, with just a touch of a cute retro game, throwing all those things together into the nether. On day 75, I came back inside to find this strider, and it looked like he multiplied. Or maybe he just found himself a companion and they adopted this cute little kid. Building that ship gave all the ancient debris time to smelt. With 40 netherite scrap, I grabbed a stack of gold and headed on over to the crafting table. And with one foul swoop, I accomplished my second goal of crafting a netherite block that I could use to finish my throne. I had one netherite ingot left over, so I excitedly headed over to my anvil, only to realize that I actually needed a smithing table. You need two iron. <laughs> I didn't have enough iron for shears, so I knew I wouldn't have enough for that either. But I wanted to take a second to enjoy my completed throne. I felt so powerful, and it would be pretty cool if you could assign rolls to all the piglins. If I wanted to upgrade my pickaxe, I would need to get some more iron. And the best way to get that is trading with piglins. I went over to find my trapped friends, and they were all missing. So I had to capture this guy instead. And after trading with him for a little while, I finally had some iron nuggets that I could use to make ingots. I crafted a smithing table and finally had myself a nether 
netherite pickaxe. I also got myself some iron boots with soul speed 3 on them from Piglin Trading. On day 76, I went out for another hunting trip. I found some hunters in the wild, but they didn't want to save their king when he was in trouble. So I got pretty good at spamming arrows. I wanted to make sure I had a lot of food for when I faced the wither. So after two full days of hunting, on day 79, I went in search to gather some mushrooms. And when I made it back to my base, I had a lot of pork chops to cook. Now that my throne was finished and I had a lot of food stored up, I wanted to give my bastion a bit of a makeover. I wanted to transform my bastion into something awesome. But before I could do that, I needed blackstone. And since I didn't want to have to go searching for it, I spent day 80 to day 81 gathering all the gold that I could find. And while exploring, I found a ruined nether portal. I was so excited to find some extra gold and get some cool enchanted tools from the chest. Although, why would anyone need a hoe in the nether if there aren't even any seeds? Anyway, before leaving, I took a little bit of time to gather all the blackstone around the portal. Day 82, when I made it back to my base, I crafted up a bunch of gold ingots and this time captured two piglins to trade with. I spent day 83 to 86 transforming this broken down bastion into this magically evil castle to rule over this nethery abyss from. I closed up the walls, added a few balconies, and was trying to make the castle look like it was infected or like it was even alive. I claimed and transformed a bastion, got myself a netherite throne, and now it was time to do one of the most scariest things that you could imagine in vanilla Minecraft. Battle a wither in the nether dimension. I spent day 87 to 92 trying to collect two more wither skulls. We got pretty lucky on the first one, but the next two were a little bit harder to get. Especially when you attack the wither skeletons, that makes the blaze get mad at you also. It also took a lot of time because I did stupid things like this. After a while, on day 93, I had three wither skulls, so I spent the rest of that day preparing to fight the wither. I made myself some new armor, and I threw all my soul sand into the lava. If you watched my 400 days video, you'll know that Herobrine intends to spawn in the wither using soul soil. Some of you guys let me know down in the comments that that doesn't work, and let's just say we should all actually be concerned, because you can spawn in the wither with soul soil, and I will show you that very soon. I spent day 94 and 95 going far away from my base in search for the perfect place to spawn the wither. See, it does work. I didn't really have good equipment, so I knew I needed some backup. I found a good place to spawn in the wither, where it was a dense forest underground, and there was a high population of piglins. I was not expecting them to automatically fight the wither, but I guess they knew that it was too dangerous to be left alive. After brutally murdering my whole army, the wither looked up at me. They didn't really help at all, but I wouldn't let their deaths be in vain. I was stuck in a cycle of tunneling to safety while spamming the wither with arrows. And of course, once the wither's health gets low enough, you can't attack him with arrows and you need to use a sword, which worked out because I ran out of arrows. There were definitely a lot of close calls, and I had to make sure that I would keep eating so that way my health would keep regenerating. I thought this was going to be the end of the playthrough, but I think I was really lucky Lucky. I didn't dig my way into any lava and the wither was positioned in just the right way that he couldn't shoot me. And after several minutes of fighting, I was so happy to see that I unlocked the wither identity, completed my final goal, and got myself a nether star. I was really convinced I was going to die. Once I had calmed down, I spent day 96 and 97 traveling back home and seeing my ship in the distance was a sight for sore eyes. With just a couple days left, I decided to make some improvements around my base. Day 90 I improved my hoglin farm, making a way for me to actually feed them and for them to be protected from my subjects. I also made this cool little room on the side for the babies to go in so that way when they grow up they can be harvested for food without having to kill the parents. <laughs> that actually sounds pretty bad. On day 99 I added a few light sources around my base, including these nice little torches and this giant chandelier chained from the nether roof. The next day I just walked around my castle in amazement, having survived 100 days as a piglin in hardcore Minecraft. Special thanks to Luke the Notable for starting the 100 days trend, to you for watching all the way through, and to my patrons for all your continued support. Also, if you enjoyed the video, consider liking and subscribing, it really helps me out, and follow me on my other social media, because I'm active on all of them every single week. All the links are in the description, and thanks again for watching.